Thank you very much uh, to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, I think I guess I have the privilege of being the last uh, of these morning presentations because I think the Ocean Health Index is a platform that kind of ties it all up together. Um, in many ways, um, what we offer is an integrated framework to combine all elements of ocean health, so biological, physical, socioeconomic, and cultural, and um, it allows us to synthesize in different indicators and assess trade-offs. One thing that I've heard throughout the morning is we all collect data um, and uh, have all these indicators, like Patrick was alluding to earlier. One thing that we're not great at doing is analyzing it and bringing them together in, the sing in a single framework so that we can better understand how one action in one sector will affect the other sectors and what are the consequences of different management interventions and different policies. So the Ocean Health Index really allows us to understand the current status of the, of the coastal and ocean ecosystems to better track how well we're doing in terms of performance and for us to also be able to communicate um, decision making. And that's the ultimate goal is to improve decision making at various scales from global to local. So um, the Ocean Health Index allows you to, or allows different countries uh, to better understand their, their uh, ocean and coastal ecosystems and also provide a tool to uh, do analysis of different management scenarios before that uh, actions are actually taken. And in doing so, we can see how different ecosystems will respond to different policies and different interventions, not only into one single sector, but across a spectrum of of 10 different goals. Um, we can also understand how well we're performing uh, across regions and within a region. So we can compare where do we need to invest resources and efforts in different parts of the country and also how does the, the region performing uh, throughout time so we can better uh, understand how well we're doing and if our policies and our actions are being effective at getting us to where we want to go. And so we have a portfolio of 10 public goals. I'll mention them in a little bit. We provide scores from 0 to 100. A score of 100 means that the reference point or the target's been met. The targets are set at whatever scale um, you're doing the assessment. Most of the scales are done uh, where decision, make, uh, decision making is done. So it could be countries, could be states, municipalities, uh, or it could be global assessments, which are the ones that our scientific uh, team does. And the global assessments right now, we're producing them annually. We use uh, over 100 globally available data sets, uh, mo many of them which are reported uh, by the countries, FAO data sets, UN data sets. Uh, and we produce uh, reports for 221 EECs and territories around the world. And we are right now have over 25 different countries and um, some of them even transboundary areas where we're doing regional assessments, which are scaled down. Uh, studies using the same framework, methods that are uh, more relevant to the local context, using local data, local reference points, so that we can better make uh, produce scores that are reflecting the local realities and integrate uh, the perspectives of the local stakeholders. Uh, and as I've been mentioning before, uh, so what we allow uh, this this allows us to do at the global level. Uh, is to produce national level scores. However, there's big limitations with the quality of globally available data. Um, as you all know, it's very really spotty and because it's uh, the quality of the data is so generally poor, um, it also doesn't allow us to make very fine level details uh, in terms of the findings that we can produce. So, and that's why we've developed the regional assessments approach because it allows us to integrate a lot of the data that you're collecting through your projects and through your different interventions and really apply them and produce uh, scores and findings for each one of the 10 goals at very small scales. And also uh, all of the data that we gather and assess is all open source. The model is flexible enough that it can couple itself to whatever the local context uh, needs are, management needs are, and it's fully transparent. We try to make it highly participatory and try to bring in NGOs, governments, uh, the civil society, and the scientific community so that everyone can provide input. Uh, so these are the 10 goals. We have food provision, artisanal fishing opportunity, natural products, carbon storage, coastal protection, 
coastal livelihoods, tourism and recreation, sense of place, clean waters, and biodiversity. In local studies, uh, you can add goals or reduce or, or eliminate goals as you see it fit. At uh, the global level, we, we weigh them equally, so each goal has a weight of 10% and so that we can bring all the data together and produce one score for every goal. Uh, but at the local level, you can uh, integrate all the local data and uh, change the weights. And for every goal, we have four different elements, the status, pressures, resilience, and the five-year trend. So in terms of collaboration, one of the things that we would like to do is work with all of you so that we can synthesize all of the data that you're collecting and produce regional assessments in order to facilitate translating all of this complex information into something that's more approachable to local decision makers. Most of the politicians don't understand the jargon of the data that we're producing. And that's a big problem. So we're trying to simplify a lot of this, but also allow it to be flexible so that it's a useful tool for understanding current status, but also seeing where we're going and seeing how our management actions are going to uh, affect the different uh, ocean and coastal ecosystems. Uh, also, five minutes is really short. It's really mm -hmm. complex stuff, uh, but uh, I'd be happy to discuss with more details in, over the next few days. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.